Welcome to Cashflow Savannah, episode 21. Chandler, how are you? How I love your shirt. Yeah, totally not planned. No, we did not plan this. It's amazing that we just met. How do we have the same exact shirt? Do we shop together? I don't think so. I guess we went to bigger pockets together. We I'm not did. too sure. We are fresh off the boat from BPCon 2023. Not sure if you can talk, tell by our t-shirts. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite parts. It says here on the yeah. sleeve, Burr. Burr. Um, I did not go to their booth, but I think this is a lender. I don't know. It's some vendor. It's like a it's like a trademark. But that reminds us of our boy Brandon Turner. Very smart. Very smart. Yeah. Bigger Pockets was great. Yes, it was. And speaking of Brandon Turner, this is the first BP Con that Brandon was not at. Did you see him anywhere? I did not. He's too big for us now. Yeah, he's living his life. <laughs> I don't blame him. He's, no. he's cash flowing. He's doing whatever he wants. That's what everybody wants to do. That's right. We love Brandon Turner. We um, It was a great experience. Uh, 2023 BP Con was in Orlando and um, it was an easy drive. Usually Chandler and I are on an airplane going to these things and we're kind of trashed when we get back. Um, but it was just kind of, you know, Orlando is not a big deal for us at all to get to. I, I really appreciated how close it was. That was one of my favorite parts was how easy it was. And we had a car while we were there. Yeah. It's super nice. And really, they always just set it up. Well, it's always convenient. Now we know a good bit of people when we go and it's just good seeing them and kind of seeing the progress that everybody's made. Chandler, you're a superstar at Bigger Pockets. It cracked me up because last year we went in San Diego in 2022. We had a great time, met a ton of people. I already had some friends, but it was your first time yeah, this dude. year walking around and every five feet people, Chandler, like you have a whole crew down there. It was, it was like old friends. Yeah, it's nice having some friends. Last year, I was just so intimidated. I had no idea. I had no idea what to do, what to talk about, how to. This year, I kind of had an idea, especially when you go to these conference, like it's easy to get kind of overloaded, like, holy cow. But um, yeah, well, this year. you did a good job of getting updates on all of our friends, what they're doing. And so, you know, talk about that a little bit. I really it's fun seeing them at the conference in 2022 and then hearing everything they did since then, because we don't always hang out with them. What were some things that you learned from some of your friends that you hadn't seen in a year? Um. So yeah, first thing I want to talk, like, it's so cool seeing people kind of just constantly scale up and like, oh, I did this last year and I'm up 10 units this year, like super motivating. And then, um, so one guy I talked to, he's, he's in the middle of a hotel and I'm sure John, John, John boy, um, huge hotel renovation, like massive, massive. And, um, he knows a ton about just development and all that and you got to speak to him a little bit and y'all construction background doesn't he yeah so he does all construction and so he's he can get things done a little bit cheaper and um but he's kind of just telling me about that and how like permits goes and talking relationships knowing people to get permits to do all that and he's had some hiccups along the way but uh talking to him about that was pretty cool uh some things have changed even for him like he's had to kind of change a little bit um, and I know y'all spoke taxes, which was really fun to listen to because <laughs> many people talk about taxes. Um, and honestly, I don't know too much about taxes. So I was kind of just listening there. Um, some, and then honestly, which was cool was talking about not cool, but, uh, some people were just open talking about their mistakes they made this year. And so, um, some people don't like talking about that. But I really talked about a lot of mistakes that people made and like how they learn from it. And the cool thing about these people is they're so like just kind of like positive about it. They're sure we made a mistake. We're moving on like and I'm on to the next thing. And so it was really that's what I talked about is, hey, like I made this mistake this year and this is how we're fixing it. And I'm on to the next one. And um, so that's that's how it works in real estate. It's making mistakes solving that problem and then another problem 
pops up and you solve that problem. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it's so motivating to be around other people in the same industry because we talk to each other a lot because we're in the same business, but it's not that easy to get around this many real estate investors. And, um, you know, John, you had really bonded with him in 2022 because he had just bought a hotel and you and I were knee deep in one ourselves. And that was a great, you know, talking point for all of us. But yeah, when he brought up the taxes, it was fantastic because I went to bigger pockets with some real estate tax questions. And again, I don't bump into CPAs every day, right? Like that's not my normal uh, group to hang out with. So I very purposely went to the real estate CPA or however you say it, the session about taxes because I had a specific tax question. And I want to give our listeners a hint. I tend to ask a lot of questions. I can't help it. And so I knew because I've been to these things before, I knew they would open up the mics and I'm still devastated because in 2022, I had a question for Pace Morby and I didn't make it up in time because, you know, everyone and their grandmother wanted to talk to him, including myself. And I ended up, you know, 30 people back and I was like number two to ask a question and they, they closed it. So I was quite upset about that, you know, just, you know, just jealous or whatever. So I was prepared. So I went to the tax thing. I had a question. I really thought my husband did not know what he was talking about. I was there to prove my husband wrong and that I was right. And then I went to the CPA panel and they had literally three CPAs and a lady whose specialty is like um, self-directed IRAs, which I'm not an expert in, have never done. But anyway, so I, as soon as they said questions, boy, I jumped to that mic. I was the first person on the mic. And so I got to ask Amanda Hahn and a few other people my tax question. Turned out my husband was right. And I was just furious because I, you know, it frustrates me on these shows because people will tell you, oh, I pay no taxes. You know, it's so easy. And, and you know, you make all this money and you don't pay taxes. That has not been my experience. And it still isn't. Um, and, you know, it, just to talk taxes for one moment, I in 2023, I'm trying to do what they call a poor man's 1031 because I did sell one property in March. And I'd like to get some, you know, depreciation back on something else in order to uh, you know, save on taxes from the sale. Okay. And they call it a poor man's 1031. I didn't 1031 it. I didn't want to, but now I'm trying to get some depreciation to cover the proceeds from a sale. So that's why they call it a poor man, 10, poor man's 1031. So I'm looking at this, you know, everyone talks about how great rapid depreciation is, and we can do an 80% rapid depreciation this year. Next year, we can do 60, 40, 20, all the way down. I hear about this all the time. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I can just do a rapid depreciation on the building I just bought, and then that'll save me on taxes. It sounds easy because I keep hearing about it on podcasts. But then when I speak to these CPAs and literally everyone else, it ended up being a $14,000 tax savings. And I'm like, I thought it was going to be like $150,000 tax savings. You know what I mean? I was furious. I really was furious, not at anyone in particular, but I hate hearing people say how easy everything is. But then once you really get in the weeds, it's not easy at all. And it's it's actually very complicated. And I would have had to buy 14 buildings this year to do the depreciation that I need if it's if only going to get, maybe that's an over-exaggeration, but I'm just saying, you know, one building to depreciate to cover up the sale of one building the math does not work. So boy, I was hot when we bumped into that guy and he brought up taxes. I was like, oh, but he also added more. You know, he knew his stuff too. Really and fun, yeah. yeah, it was just to, I mean, how often do you just get to meet someone for 10 minutes and talk about real estate taxes and learn something and then you walk away way smarter. I mean, that's the great thing about bigger pockets. Yeah, for sure. I think the most you can gain from conferences is, is the knowledge you come back with. That knowledge is it has a ton of value to it. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, just being around like-minded people constantly, you just kind of get this high. And um, the, the key to it is just keeping it the entire year, not just kind of going on conference high and then coming back down. That's very true. Well, this conference, this was my third bigger pockets. Um, I went in New Orleans and then last year in San Diego and then this year. And um, it was very different for me because our very good friend Jabbar was there, Jabbar Adasada. He has been on this show as a he was speaking at our um, meetup. And Jabbar is like so special to both of us, Chandler. We love him. And so Jabbar was speaking at two different things. And of course, that was my priority. Like I was going to go support Jabbar. And I did have a whole list of things. I was really there to learn about self-storage and managed to do nothing with Mm self-storage. 
So I, because I followed Jabbar around, um, which was great and I wouldn't change it for anything, I ended up in a lot of the rookie rooms, which I normally wouldn't have even gone in. I mean, I just wouldn't have even thought, but of course I'm going to see my kid, you know, who's speaking. I consider him one of my kids. And so Jabbar is in very deep with this guy. His name is Dan, Dan Sheik. And yeah. you and I had met Dan back in San Diego, but we really didn't understand who he was or what he was doing. And I didn't even know he had a book. Did you know he had a book when we met him last year? I didn't either. So um, I actually really enjoyed the rookie rooms and uh, you know, I'm old. And so half the kids in there listening to Dan and Jabbar and then the other one, they're my kid's age. And I was very blown away by these 19 and 20 and 21 year olds that already have real estate. And um, I came out that Dan has this group. It's called Sheik's Freaks. His name is Sheik and he made this thing, Sheik's Freaks. And so he said something about a book signing and I thought, huh, you know, it's all kind of gelling, you know, I'm a little slow. And I said, well, I'm going to buy Dan's books for my kids. And I did, I have two sons and um, I, you know, they're over real estate. Like I really don't talk to them a whole lot about it. They kind of soak it up being around us, but I, you know, I don't push it. And so I bought those books. I'm sure you remember Chandler. I had Dan sign them over or whatever. And so um, my youngest, who's 19 came home this weekend and I said, Hey, I, I bought you a book at bigger pockets. And he was like, really? And I said, yeah. And he called me yesterday and he had read the thing cover to cover and he joined okay. Sheik's. Yes. He joined Sheik's Freaks yesterday and he wants to start buying real estate. Like Dan, I'm just so excited to say this. And I, hopefully our other listeners, maybe you're, you know, in the younger age bracket, but there is this group where you can hang out with people your age and learn real estate investing. And I'm just, I can't even tell you like this guy you know, makes such a difference in my kid's life within five minutes. It's crazy how he can be raised around my help, myself and my husband doing all this. But we never sat him down and said, okay, hey, this is the step one, two, three, four to financial independence. And he now gets it. So I have really? to say that's my best takeaway. That is awesome. I didn't know. Because it takes some kids just won't read it. Oh, thanks, mom. Right. Uh, I have a couple of books that mom gave me. <laughs> I just hadn't read. Um, but no, that's really cool. Dan was like, I spoke to Dan a ton. He, he, um, mm. he likes little side hustles and I do too. So we spoke a lot about that, but, um, wow. I spoke, I spoke, I have a younger brother too, same age as Josh. And, um, I was talking about getting Blaine in there as well, which would be super cool. Maybe I can mention that and say, Hey, Josh is in it. Like, Remember uh, how I couldn't decide if I wanted the workbook and I should have gotten the workbooks, but I just want to give Dan Sheik a shout out. He has a book through Bigger Pockets, and it's yeah. called um, First to a Million. And I haven't read it. <laughs> hey, I'm the first to tell you I haven't read it. But he um, I like this guy so much and getting being in his his circle, which is all 19 to 23 year olds. I was like, wow, he's, you know, that really impressed me that he had really been making a difference in these kids' lives. And just to look at Jabbar, I mean, he is a big reason Jabbar is where he is and Marcel, you know, many of our friends, like, I don't know, that was very powerful to me. And he was a wonderful human. So I just want to recommend that book to anyone, you know, that's interested. Um, and then after Josh read the book, I got onto Amazon this morning and I ordered him Craig Curlop's book, I ordered him one of Brandon Turner's, and then I ordered him... Um, I can't remember, but it was perfect because the night, Friday night, he was home and we had a Marine over for dinner. We had a big, you know, dinner party and um, the Marine was talking about house hacking. He has two houses. And so it, I think all the knowledge just kind of came together for Josh. Like we kind of got him around real estate investors, you and me, Jalen, yeah. and then I happened to hand him a book for, just right for his age group. So that's probably my best takeaway is maybe my kid's going to get into real estate and I'm excited. Really cool. That's awesome. I like to hear that for sure. And that group has some very interesting kids in there, or I say kids, I'm like the same age as them. Interesting guys or girls. Um, yeah. Because what Dan talks about is like, I'm younger. And he's like, if you're in your 20s and you're even thinking about it, you, he calls them freaks. But um, I think if you can start that early and just, it's so hard to find anybody at that age that's even thinking about buying real estate all they're thinking about is college parties girls like all of that kind of stuff and to get started and like being that group that early is a huge, huge. plus 
But but you combine that with house hacking, like Josh, for example, he's in Athens, Georgia. He's living with roommates right now. He's not married. He's going to move every year if he doesn't house hack, which is so annoying. He's already dealing with that. He's going to have to move, you know, but if he can buy a three, four, five bedroom house and rent out to his friends, now he has a piece of real estate and his friends are going to pay it off for him. Like it's kind of hitting, you know, people don't think of a college A student being the perfect real estate investor, but they really are because they really aren't tied down by anything. They're perfect. They're easy. Perfect for it. I'm telling my parents right now, hey, you just bought my brothers in college as well and just buy a house right now. And in four years, I mean, yeah. you're already paying for rent. Just go ahead and own that thing, you know? Like, just makes sense. I know they'd appreciate um, over time. But uh, yeah, college students, are, if you can find the capital, it's such a good time. I mean, it really is because you can just get your friends in there, really. Mm-hmm. Like, finding roommates is easy. Right. Um, so that's a really cool takeaway. Yeah, that's a huge takeaway, Julie. That's awesome. I'm really excited. I really am. And I haven't even mailed the book to my other son, but He'll what a blessing. It. I never would have been in those rooms had I not been following Jabbar around, but I was going to be wherever Jabbar was speaking. I was going to be there. I said, it doesn't matter. You really are going for the networking. You're not necessarily going for the sessions anyway. I enjoy the sessions, but uh, I have to say uh, that was such a blessing. Uh, that is, I, can, I wish I was, um, when I saw him, I wish I could talk to him a little bit more about it. But, um, well, next time you see him, yeah, he's going to be a lot more educated. Yeah. I need to get him on Blaine. Say, hey, man, yes. he's in this group. So, um, that's well, awesome. I think they have to hear it from someone, not their mom, not their brother, not their sister. Cause I mean, my kids have heard us talk real estate their whole lives. Like it's ad nauseum. So, I appreciate Dan Sheik stepping in and I never planned that. It was, I just like, this is a great guy and he's got a good thing going. I'm going to support him and buy his book. Cause I have a 19 year old and a 21 year old. Like why not? So yeah. I don't know why kids don't listen to their parents. <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense. I kind of, for my little brother, he, he listens to me a little bit. I kind of have to show him first. Yeah. But um, yeah, for some reason, if it's a parent, I don't know why they don't listen. But they just don't. I remember when my kids were little and I'd be trying to get them to eat stuff. And they're like, no. And so one of my kids, this one, I'll never forget. He goes, well, I can't trust you if it tastes good or not. You're an adult. And I said, but it does taste good to me. Like, I'm telling you the truth. It's like they just assumed they they only trusted the the, uh, uh, belief of another kid if a food tasted good or not. But what an adult said made it was, you know, of no bearing. And I thought, well, what a terrible way to judge if food is good or not. Like how, of course I know what food tastes like, good food tastes like, but he just, I guess he assumed all adults were liars. I don't know. It was very funny when he said that to me. I was like, what? Sweet. But yeah, bigger pockets. Someone, another thing that kind of, for me, um, and you mention this all the time is I used to just make so many excuses. Uh, I don't have this. I need this. And getting, I'm getting around people younger than me. I'm 26 years old. I'm getting around people younger than me that have 25 plus units and getting around those people just cuts out every single excuse you have. Like you just can't have any. And so that's another big plus is getting around those kind of people, even younger than me. Um, Just opens your mind up. Hey, like how did you do these things? Like, and it, you can learn so much from those people younger than you. Makes you feel kind of like a loser, but yeah, it's very motivating. You're just like, quit making excuses. I have so many more things going than they do financially, you know, or whatever. But you mentioned like feeling like a loser. Honestly, you need to be in those rooms where you feel like a loser, like all the time. Like I just, and I really am in those rooms all the time. It's very uncomfortable because I can't sit there and go, Oh, I got this many units and I've done a million dollars. But, um, It'll catch up someday and Mm -hmm. being who you hang, like being around who you hanging out is like a big key for me. Like, I just don't want to hang out with like people that just are going to pull me down and be negative. Like those people are just always like positive and they want to help too. Like they just really want to help. And uh, so I like being around those people. Well, one of my favorite moments 
you know, Jabbar raises a good bit of private capital. And I know that you're educating yourself on that and working on that as well. It hasn't been a focus of mine, but I need to understand it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I get it, but you're right in the middle of Matt Faircloth's book. And Jabbar was talking, we we're the three of us were at a table and Jabbar was talking about how that book had really changed his real estate life. And guess who walks by? Matt Faircloth. And so he came over and talked with us. You know, that's the great thing about Bigger Pockets is so many of these guys that write books for them are just such good humans and they write these wonderful books. They're willing to share and you can go to these, you know, get togethers and you can rub elbows with them and ask questions. It's very inspiring. I just love it. They love talking. And even you didn't mention this. Jabbar tells them the story. Yeah. And Matt says, hey, come to my booth tomorrow. So we went to his booth the next day. And did a whole video. Jabbar did, not me. Jabbar like told his story. And uh, Matt was like, hey, you get 30 minutes with me on Zoom since you told me that story. And so like, that's just how nice and like how much time yeah. they were able to give to other people. So yeah, Jabbar gets 30 minutes with Matt Faircloth. I'm kind of jealous. But, uh, I am too. I I'll, was just, like, I'll go to Jabbar and say, hey, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, he gave yeah. him a great testimonial and, and Matt said he offered him something else. I can't remember. He said, you can have X or you can have a 30 minute Zoom call. He did. I yeah, think it was-, it was money, but it was something. I can't remember. And Jabbar said, of course, I'm going to take the Zoom call. And I thought, boy, I would too, you know, because just getting his attention for 30 minutes where you can just pepper him. And I've been honored to have Craig Curlop's brain, you know, when I need to, he'll let me just ask him questions, you know, and it, I've just learned so much that way, having their full attention. It's, it's amazing how, what you can that get is, from these guys. That's the coolest thing about BPCon for sure. And yeah. I feel like everybody they choose is just so like wide open. Hey, ask me anything. And when you talk to them, they just give you your attention and like, they don't have anything. Yeah, I just did this. This is what to do. Uh, so it's good. It's a great problem solver conference. I feel like if you have a problem, yeah, go there true. You can solve so many problems. It's crazy. Chandler, talk about Pace Morby. Um, you were telling me about what he did. I didn't, neither of us got to experience it, but you and I are both big Pace Morby fans. He's creative financing guy, comes from nothing. Um, talk a little bit about what you heard about Pace Morby. At so, Oh, Pace Morby is insane. I don't do creative financing. Um, I just, it doesn't fire me up, but Pace Morby fires me up. Like he mm-hmm. knows what he's doing. He's such a good salesman. Uh, the time he gives you and the time he spends teaching other people is insane. And um, so Pace was having his session and I it was, it was sold out like immediately. So I didn't get in. I don't think you got in either, did you? Um, but Pace always has a camera on him. So that's a good thing. Anyways, I was watching his video. Pace in a session. At BPCon. In a session at BPCon, walking around the room with a mic and his phone, calls some uh, a seller and gets a sub two deal while in that session. So it was a live, he was putting the mic to his phone and then he would talk going back and forth with the seller gets under contract with a sub two deal. And then here's the cool part. He raised money from people in that same room to fund that sub two deal. I blew my mind. I was like, this dude is amazing. He got the deal. First of all, I don't know how he got a deal so fast, but then to raise the capital in the same exact room oh it just makes it look so easy but uh, But pace morby is the boss he is yeah pace morby is a pro i am a big fan i I, he's bought millions of dollars in real estate with no money and honestly i got to know him last year and i was just blown away with what he's doing something about pace um i feel like you can learn from everyone yeah. And what I learned a lot from Pace is kind of like the way he runs his business, uh, the way he does social media. That's a big thing I learned from him. Although I don't do social media, but like I will eventually. But the things he does and talks about, like outside of just buying real estate, you can learn so much from him. And the amount of work this dude puts in is insane. He wakes up at 250 every morning. Yeah, he wakes up at 2.50 and he's just on the computer at 3. 
and then just rolls all day. And um, so, yeah, he's he's a beast for sure. Everybody he's wants to see him. His lines were through the roof. And it just hit me. That was the third book I bought my son was Pace Morby. Um, it said something like buying money, buy real wealth estate with cash. no money. Yeah. Wealth without cash. That's it. Wealth with no cash. So I want to give him a shout out because and I, I haven't read it. I'm sorry. I haven't read any of those books, but I, I know he's legit. And meeting him in person last year and hanging out with him for a bit like we did, he's just he's as real and nice in person as he is on the video. It's not fake at all. That really that impressed me. Thing, I, I don't know how I forget about that, but yeah, I want to talk about Jewel. We, we saw him last year at BP Con, and he was eating at the same restaurant as us. And we we're like, dang, that's pace over there. And we were all kind of scared to go up to him. And you were like, oh, I'm going up there. <laughs> sure enough, he's like, sit at the dinner table, sit yeah. with us, have a drink, like get some food, do this. And we're like, wow, this dude just went through like this long day. You would think like, all right, nobody, he just doesn't want anybody around. Sure enough, he like was inviting everybody. He he, he, was. he got a steak and he's like, you want to buy it? And I was like, no, I'm good, but I appreciate it. <laughs> just, he would have bought us dinner. He was fantastic. When I chatted up his cameraman, um, when I get around those big, big guys like that, I like to chat up the little people that follow him around. And the cameraman had so many great stories about, you know, all positive, of course. Yeah. I wasn't trying to get d dirt or anything, but that was fantastic. It was really fun hanging out with Pace in San Diego. And he's only gotten bigger since then. Oh, yeah. His his cameraman is now doing a good bit of deals now. I've seen That's that. Awesome. So he is. But yeah, Pace Morby's, he's one of my favorites. I don't do the creative finance, but just learning from him is one of the, some of the best. Because you can yeah. learn. You can learn some of the stuff he does and take that same tactics and go do real estate through the same tactics that he does. It's just different. Um, so I'm trying to think of any other people that were really like Dan Sheets was really cool. Yeah. Ace Morby was really good. And well, then we got to see you will know their names. What was their names? They got the big TV show. Oh, oh, that was, yeah. <laughs> Tarek, 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 Tarek and I don't know. Yeah. I didn't care. Yeah. I really did not care. I'm happy for them. Don't get me wrong, but that they, they were not interesting. And the amount of plastic surgery on that guy was very yeah. unmanly. I didn't, <laughs> I forgot they were there to be honest with you, Chandler. That was, I mean, I was sitting there working. I pulled out my iPad and I was like, let me just keep moving. I had to mention it. Well, so, okay. We I, thought he had a cool and I hadn't heard his story. Okay. I think you had heard his story, right? Yeah. Uh, I had, well, I did. You're right. I had heard his bigger pockets interview and, and even that I wasn't blown away by, but, um, you know, they had celebrities at the end, but one thing I wanted to mention, and I don't mean to be a Debbie downer, but, um, it's 2023 and it's a tough market and interest rates have gone way up and they don't seem to be heading South and we're all worried they're going to go higher. And, you know, I'm sure you would agree Chandler it's affected things, uh, on multiple levels. And I did hang out with one person who I would, I won't name at all, but um, this person does a lot of investing in passive, you know, in passive investing with other deals. And um, at one point, this, this person, I know them pretty well, and they shared that things are not going well in many of their deals. And they're not the only person. Okay. This is a well-known fact that all these guys did these you know, bought these huge buildings with a 3% interest rate and they ran their numbers there. And now interest rates are going to be at nine soon. And, and that's just, it's very difficult. So we're seeing a lot of capital calls. Um, a lot of people, I know a lot of people in these, you know, big deals, they haven't gotten any money at all out of them yet. You know, they're counting on monthly income. It's not coming. The cash out refis, they're even, they're terrified to even do the cash out refi, much less having this, you know, they're expecting to have, you know, $300,000 to hand back to investors because the property is appreciated and yada, yada, yada. Well, now with the interest rates, they're actually dreading these um, cash out refis that they have to do contractually. Their, their loans are only good for five to seven years. So as all these commercial loans reset, the operators are having to share the bad news with all the people that give the money that not only are we not handing you your money back plus interest, we're really not sure about the loan and we might have to ask you to put more money back into the deal. So it's quite painful. This is a very, very, very tough market. And I feel for everyone in this situation, 
Um, and I even talked to a private money lender and they're not, they're having a hard time collecting on, on some that they've loaned out. Now they made some mistakes, which they own, you know, uh, they didn't do all the due diligence that they should have. And they didn't get a lien on a property. They did a personal guarantee instead of it. And so that was quite interesting. But again, we learn more from people's mistakes than from their successes. You know, it's easy for me to go look at Pace Morby, you know, for $400 million or whatever it is he owns. And it, he Pace can make it seem very easy, but I don't doubt that he's worked very hard for everything he's had and he's been through the bumps. And so it was interesting having this very wealthy person, you know, talk to me about the bumps that they were experiencing in this market. And I have to tell you, I personally, my personal investing, uh, you know, strategy is that I just really prefer to buy things on my own, you know, and then you have full control over the deal. And it really reiterated to me that I do feel very happy about my path. I know that's not for everyone, but it was just, it was tough to hear when someone just got really down to it and were they were honest where they're at. And I said, boy, I'm really sorry. It, it's a very tough market. Yeah. It takes a lot of guts to be honest, like with that kind of stuff too. Not many people are just honest. They don't want to tell anybody that, but, um, yeah, that's why it's always nice to kind of go see. I know multifamily is kind of the big, big multifamily is struggling right now. Um, but honestly, I mean, most of these people are troopers and they just, they, they're always, so, they're kind of positive. They ended on a positive note. Well, I'll just go and do this and it'll be okay. But um, as long as they don't quit, I think they'll end up being okay. But um, yeah, the for sure. in finance is stay alive till 25. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they're saying. And it's true. It's like, we're going to hit, you know, interest rates are up. And if you've got a cash or refi, you just got to hang on to your stuff, stay alive and you're going to be fine. But it is tough. It is very tough. I don't want to act like everything is roses and everything. Everyone at BPCon is bajillionaires. It was, you got to hear the highs and the lows, which I thought was great. Which that was another thing. I think that was a big shift compared to last year. Everybody was on this super high. And um, you didn't really talk about many lows last year. This year, everybody's kind of like, all right, it's a little shaky. Mm -hmm. um, things are happening. So, yeah, I enjoy listening to those people speak about that kind of thing because nobody talks about it. Everybody wants to hear Pace Morby in there. I uh, did $400 million in deals this year. Yeah. So. And he has. And he is awesome. One other speaker that you and I both listened to Chandler and everybody was talking about it. His name is David Osborne yeah. and he had one of the opening sessions and um, it was powerful. I got a lot out of that. What was your favorite takeaway from David Osborne Chandler? He was fantastic. David Osborne. He, so you knew a little bit about him. Yeah. I had never even heard of this dude. Um, so he walked up and I was kind of, all right, cool. And then he just kind of started talking about, how he started as a young age and it kind of as him at a young age related to me a lot I, that's when it kind of popped up i was like oh, okay and then he started talking about how he found one person and that person held him accountable vice versa and i was like wow that's really good he got really just specific with his goals and just being every day he woke up he looked at his goals and was like all right am i doing this this and this and uh I don't know. He was just a really good speaker and I really grabbed my attention because I think at him at a young age, I really related with because it's real estate's hard. Like it really is. Everybody makes it seem so easy, but it's so hard and well worth it. But it's hard. And um, I think I just related with him at a young age and I was like, wow, that's really smart. And he, he just took people and he was like, all right, we're going to go up together. And a lot of people, me, I started, I was just trying to do it by myself <laughs> and I was just watching YouTube by myself and wasn't talking to anybody else. I just didn't know anybody else, but I uh, quickly figured out that, Hey, you need some friends around you and go up together. Yeah. Just some background on David Osborne. You know, this he's worth, in my understanding, I, I have no idea. I'm not in his pocket or anything, but I think I, my understanding is that he's worth over 200 million. Yeah. And that's, that's real estate. He's a real estate investor, but he got divorced at a very young age. I mean, he's been through a lot. It's again, he didn't have a silver spoon in his mouth. You know, he went through a ton and he became an agent and then really became a very good and talented and money-making agent. And he started buying real estate. 
And then he talked as well about, um, you know, once he was an agent and he was going to conventions, kind of like what we just did. And he met another very young and driven agent and they became accountability partners. And now they're both worth, worth, is that nine figures? I'm not sure, uh, but that they're both worth nine figures to this day. And they added in more and more and they really grew together. But, and, and, you know, David, he writes down his goals and he checks it off every day. He's like, did I do that? You know, he holds himself, I would say, to extreme yeah, accountability. Would you agree with him? Yeah. He has a he, journal. Like it was well written out. There's like a ton of stuff going on in that book. And I was like, well, yeah, he's actually doing it. And um, I feel like I'm missing one big piece that he talked about that can't pop up right now. Um, man. I, he, he, was, he talked about his circle a lot, the people around him. and Yeah. He was one of my favorite speakers that I heard yeah. there. He, I really enjoyed his speech. And that's one that I keep kind of coming back around. I'm like, oh, David Osborne was really good. So, Well, and if you want to be this crazy successful person, you know, you've got to see how the other ones did it. And I, I liked how honest he was about his process. And he's an extreme goal setter, an extreme accountability guy, but he's also reached an extreme level of wealth. And you see where when you have that kind of accountability and goal setting, you're going to either you're going to hit your goals, or you're going to cry every day. Well, he that's how he hit all of his goals. He just stuck right to it. Yeah, for sure. And I kind of like setting the goals higher. And then if like you get like you set the goal higher, like and you kind of almost get there, and you don't get there. You're still at a very high level of right. success, even if you don't get there. So it's always nice setting those goals like really high, maybe a little like unrealistic. But uh, what if you said it unrealistic and you actually hit it? You know, like, yeah. well, I told you this many times. It's now October and all year, you know, I haven't been buying, right, Chandler? And what did I tell you every single time? You'd see a house or this. What did I always tell you? Um, you tell me a lot. So I'm oh, sorry. To- I've had in my mind all this year, I'm going to buy something big. Oh, okay. Yeah. I said that over and over because I would see things, I would see things. And if they were screaming deals, I would have bought them. Don't get me wrong. But I've just, it reminded me of that when he was talking because I've had this mindset all year. I'm only going to buy something big. I'm only going to buy get something big. And then I bought a self storage facility and I'm really proud of that. But I felt like as soon as it came along, I said, yes, boom, I'm ready. This has been my goal. I now hit it. I'm proud to say that. But I had to have that mindset of quit thinking small, think big. Yeah. One of my favorite investors, Sergio Altamare, he was not at Bigger Pockets, but he's, whenever I see him, he's always pushing me to think big. And that goes with goal setting, right? And accountability. And, it's, you know, he's absolutely right. Like, quit thinking one or two, think 30 or 40. Yeah. And then it comes to you. And I, I'm very proud of that. So that it reminded me of that with David, where it's like, I was like, yeah, I had this goal this whole time. I'm not going to buy anything until I'm going to, until I buy something big. I'm going after big stuff. Like, that's where I'm at. Yeah. And we got to bring Pace Morby back into this. Yeah. He, um, because I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up with you. He talks about the hardest thing in real estate is figuring out what in the world to do because there's so much. There's mm-hmm. wholesaling. There's buying holds. There's flipping. There's sub two. There's medium term rentals. There's short term rentals. There's so much. And like figuring out what you want to do, he he would say he's like that's the hardest thing. Um, about real estate is kind of figuring out that one thing because you want to just go dip your hands in everything. And that's pretty smart. Like, I want to bring it back to you. It's like you had that one thing and you had your mindset on it and you get it. Um, so that's really kind of wrap back up on that is pick your one thing, yep. set your mind to it and just be ready for it when it comes up. That's right. Well, so. and the, the rookie, the other thing we went to a Jabbar was a bunch of rookies on the stage and one of them said, men's, I think about my men's and I was like, men's. And they said, most important next step. And you've got to have that singular, most important next step, which is kind of the same thing as the one thing. And it, but I really like that better for some reason. But I thought, yeah, we need all need that. What's our most important next step? Pick it. And you've got to hit that every single day and you are going to hit your goals. So that's yeah, what when you're getting started, your one thing is one door. Just get one door. Yeah. And I kind of like it. I was like, when you start like thinking about opportunity and like just like thinking about it, it's the weirdest thing. It somehow pops up. It's kind of like you see a red car or you 
you find a red car and you really like it, you start seeing them everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same thing with what you're talking about. Like you, you think about your one big thing and they somehow, I don't know how they somehow just start popping up. Um, so that's another thing. Start like thinking about it and also talking about it is um, really important. Absolutely. And as the year, you know, draws to a close, you and I Chandler, we got to have our goals. I have my one most important next step. I, hopefully you do as well, but you know, mine. <laughs> absolutely. Like we are working towards that most important next step every day and we're all on our own journeys and everyone's going to have their own way. But, um, you know, on that, I presented for Sarah Weaver's group last night and, um, they were so focused on all the ways you can fail in real estate. I mean, they kept saying, what if you have to evict? What if they tear up your place? What if, what if, and I'm like, just get a property and figure it out. Like you think my journey has been perfect, but, and that's where getting around other investors, it just helps you to not be so scared of those things that can happen because those things are going to happen. But when you have a crew around you of friends, you know, and just having someone you can pick up the phone and go, oh my gosh, I've got a sewer leak. What do I do? That's so invaluable. And going to things like bigger pockets and making those con- connections, when stuff comes up that's stopping you from hitting your goals and having someone you can pick up the phone to, that's just incredible amount of value in your life. Um, incredible. I spoke to someone in bigger pockets. I forget his name. He, I hate to say it. He, he was one of the speakers. I just forget his name. Forgive me. He um he was just like entrepreneurship is a problem popping up and solving it. That's true. You solve that problem, another problem pops up, and you solve it. And then just kind of he's like, it's just continuous. And he's like, that's what it is. And so, and that's the same with real estate. That's a problem's going to pop up, you solve it. Problem pops up, you solve it. So. Uh, don't. Right, but you don't throw the whole thing out because that one problem might pop up yeah, six yeah. years in. So <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Anyways. Well, thank you for the recap, Chandler. This has been great. I had a great time this year too. Yeah, I wish they had a bigger pockets conference every weekend. <laughs> um, anyways, thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. And please like, comment, share. Uh, give us feedback. Like, what do you want to listen to? Like, what do we want to talk about? Uh, please, like, reach out to us and let us know. And we will gladly speak about it on one of the next podcasts. Um, but thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.